Hey, boys and girls, how many of you have ever noticed that on my cart I have these really colorful feathers? Well, there's a reason for that. It's because I love color. I should, on art teacher, right? Artists should love colors. I know, you know what else I've just now noticed? Miss Markham is dressed really colorful today. I love that outfit. Thanks, I heard you were gonna talk about color today and this is my most colorful shirt in my closet. Well, guess what? You have all the colors of the rainbow on that shirt. Let me see, I see red, orange, yellow, wait a minute, I, oh, green, here's green on the back, blue, and here's indigo, and here is violet. Purple. Okay. Hey, Roy G. Biv. Yeah, you, you're colorful yeah. too. Roy G. Biv is a boy whose name, now he's not a real boy, he's a made up boy, but he's a boy whose name spells out the colors of the, of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, um, violet, indigo, and violet. I think I got those two hairs mixed up. But that's okay. So, uh, what makes the colors of the rainbows? Well, rainbows are made when the sunlight, white light, hits little droplets of water. Raindrops. The raindrops bends the light. You see, light travels in rays. Okay? Like that. So, you know how when you draw a picture of the sun and you make the rays coming out from the sun? Light really does travel in rays, but when it hits something, it bends it, and that separates the colors. There are seven different rays that come that actually make up the light all around us, seven, seven different time, types, and they all travel. I say they travel in straight lines, but within those straight lines, they're doing like this, kind of like sound waves. You know, sound waves travel, well, light travels in waves too. And when it hits a raindrop, it breaks it into seven different colors. Let's, um, here we go, when the sun's white light hits a raindrop, it separates into the colors of the rainbow. This can be seen by using a prism. And I happen to have a prism. A prism separates the white light into the colors of the rainbow. You know what? I wonder if Miss Markham would turn out the lights and maybe we could take this prism and this flashlight and see if we can make our own rainbow. That'd be awesome. Oh, Mr. Myers is in here. He's going to turn out the lights. All right, guys, can you see the rainbow? Miss Markham is pointing it. Oh, wow. That is pretty awesome. Yeah, I see a little bit. It looks like um, bluish, greenish right in here. I see a little bit more of a lighter color going some into some red. I see red and yellow. Yeah. A little bit orange. And look, if I pull my light a little bit closer, we get a smaller rainbow, but the colors are a little brighter. Okay, well, that's wonderful. And if they had a prism at home, they might be able to get a slightly different look too. Yeah. With different colors. So, yeah, you may have a prism at home, but if you don't, I'll tell you what. Miss Markham, turn on the lights and I'll show them how to make a homemade prism. Well, hey. I want to ask you a question. Okay. Where can you get a prism? Where, okay. where can you buy a prism? I mean, I, can you make one? Can you buy one? You can do both. I don't even know where. I've never seen one at Walmart, so I was just asking. Uh, you know what? I've never seen one at Walmart either. But I think you can get one on Amazon if you just type in prism. However, you know, most kids, they don't get to order off Amazon. True. So we're going to show them how to make a homemade prism. Oh, so yes. I know most of you have cool. a small mirror somewhere around your house. I have one in my purse that, you know, came with my makeup. And some of your moms may have extra mirrors from where they, you know, out of their makeup kits or whatever. Or you might have a mirror in the bathroom where you look to see your teeth or look to see the back of your hair. So what you need to make a homemade prism, Mr. Myers, you need a mirror. And you take the mirror, and, and you also need, guys, you're gonna need a clear container. Now this is a peanut butter container. 
No, it says pretzels. Oh, I love those. Peanut butter filled They're pretzels. Gone, though, so. They're gone. So we're going to just use it. Another they're useful. That's, that's right. Pretty clever. We are repurposing. Upcycling. Yeah. We're upcycling, Miss Jennifer says. That's what we're doing. Repurposing, upcycling. So we're going to put that mirror, just drop out, and I filled it with water. So you're going to fill it with water. Just want to set it like this? Yeah, but turn it this way because I'm going to shine this light on it. Mm -hmm. just like this? Mm-hmm. All right. And it's just going to let it fall back. Look, look, fall back the other way there. Yeah, just okay. right there. Okay. So we just drop that mirror in there, and I'm going to shine this flashlight on it. And um, I'll tell you what, we're going to see if we can find a rainbow somewhere in this classroom. Why don't you go turn those lights out? This is going to be cool. See so if we cool. can make a homemade prism. Okay, I'm excited. Yes, Miss Markham, we might need your poster board yeah, in okay, a minute. Next one. Okay. Oh, I already see it. Oh, I see it. Hang it's on. working better than the store bought oh, prism. Yeah. Check that out. And awesome. you know, Miss Campbell, I'm seeing um, I'm seeing the video part, and I'm also seeing what this in lock. Uh, in live view, uh -huh. and I don't think that our camera does this justice. Oh, look at those colors right there. Oh, that's so Oh, awesome. there was a really good rainbow right there, guys. I agree. Oh, I think that's actually doing better than our prism just a second ago. That is so cool. Guys, if you're not seeing these colors, um, this could be something that you actually see better uh, in real life than on the camera. I hope you will try this at home. With your parents' permission, of course. Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of those colors, even better this time. It reminds me of the um, Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. Yeah, and the reason why we're using a poster board is um, our whiteboard was a little shiny, so we didn't know if, if that would affect anything. That else. is the most awesome. Let me rainbow. see if I pull it closer. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing colors still the there. The red too. is pretty bright. Taking it back. I can see. Yeah, it does remind me of, um, of the Northern Lights. That's pretty cool. Now, if you'll get the lights, I'm going to tell them something else. All right, guys, so you saw me make a homemade prism. There's even another way you can make a homemade prism, but you need the real sunshine to do this. You need a water hose and sunlight. You can take your water hose and you can put the sprinkler on and just hold it up and spray it and look around and you'll see a rainbow on the ground. That happens to me almost every time I wash the car or spray my water hose. Yeah, I've so seen that before. That's the same way real rainbows are made. So let's review what we've learned so far. Okay. The colors of the rainbow. You can remember the colors of the rainbow by remembering my fake boy's name, Roy G. Biv. Roy R. Let me write on the board. Let me put it up here. Oh, there it is. R for red is the first letter of Roy's name. O for orange is the second letter. Y for yellow. Let's play like his middle initial is G. You know, like my name is Wanda Darlene Campbell. So my middle initial is D. So my name would be W.D. Campbell. Well, he's Roy G. Bibb. And you just put a period after an initial. So G. For green. Biv is his last name. B for blue. I for indigo. Indigo is a color that's made by mixing blue and purple together. And V for violet. Violet is another word for just plain purple. All right. So guys, our art project today is going to be using the colors of the rainbow to make pictures. So let's look at some pictures people have made using the colors of the rainbow. You already saw Miss Markham, sure. Look at this cat. Somebody used the rainbow colors to do this cat face. That's awesome. It's beautiful. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, rainbow world. I love this. I love this. This looks like the autumn, a fall rain rainbow street light i love that oh check this eye out they've used the rainbow colors to show a person's eye and look at this fairy the rainbow fairy you might want to make a rainbow fairy an elephant spraying water that comes out the colors of the rainbow 
And now let me show you how we're going to do our rainbow picture. Okay, one option is you can make a rainbow world. And on this one, I just drew a rainbow, kind of like they did with that one with the trees and the water and the rainbow. So you can just draw a rainbow and you can draw whatever you want. You can make cats, dogs, unicorns, houses, whatever, dinosaurs, anything. You just want those rainbow colors in your picture. But this one is the one I really love. And if Miss Markham will show this next slide here, thank you. It, I got the idea from this picture. I just think this is awesome. A few weeks ago, we talked about silhouettes in, in, my, in the art classes here at school. A silhouette is when you can only see the outline of something and it's done in black. So these are the silhouettes of trees. But notice everything above it is rainbow colors. Now, let's talk about what we're gonna to need to do this piece of artwork. The supplies you're gonna need. You're gonna need markers, paint, or crayons, and of course, paper, and that's it. So let's talk about how to do it. All right, guys, so you're gonna need seven colors because there are seven colors of the rainbow. I have Mr. Myers here, he's doing the project with me. Miss Jennifer and Miss Markham sitting over here is doing the project with us. So let's get ready. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is our, we're gonna choose our first color, which is red. Now mine is peeled a little bit. So if you have a crayon like this, you can actually peel the ends a little. If you have the other kind, you can roll them out a little bit. I'm gonna lay a crayon on the side and we're just going to color. A red area. Don't go too far because you've got some other colors to add. So let's get our red on there. Good job. So then our next color of the rainbow, as we can see, is orange. So we're going to take our orange, we're going to lay our orange, and we're going to make a stripe of orange. It does not have to be the same size as your red stripe. That's up to you. It can be fatter or skinnier. Just don't make it too fat because you have to have space for all the other colors. After you finish your orange, can you guess which color is next? Ah, uh, no, somebody out there said yellow. You're right, it's yellow. Yellow comes next, so we're gonna make a swipe of yellow. Coloring is therapeutic. <laughs> Feels good to color. It really does. of it so I can get a better end on it. If they overlap a little bit like that, that's perfectly okay because Rainbow colors do overlap. They do kind of go over top of each other. After our green, you're right, blue. No, I have a blue here somewhere. Here we go, blue. Roy's middle name, middle initial of his last name is I, and this stands for indigo. 
Now, when I did this picture, I didn't have an indigo crayon with me. So what I did is I mixed blue and purple together and pushed down kind of hard to get my indigo. But this time I actually do have an indigo crayon. Indigo is just like a dark purple blue. Like a blue jean color, Miss Kim? Like a blue jean color. That's exactly right. Like the dark blue jeans. Indigo jeans. My color. You have indigo jeans on? Mm -hmm. Oh, yay. It's almost like navy blue. Almost. And then the last color we're going to be using is violet. And violet is just purple. Mine has a little bit of a red tint to it and that is perfectly okay. It says it is violet red. One little girl told me that this looked like unicorn world to her. So, yes, if you have a sticker of a unicorn or you want to draw a unicorn and make yours into a unicorn, that is fine. Now, I wanted to show you this next part can be done with crayons or markers. This one I did with marker. This one I did with crayon. And the one I'm doing right now, I'm going to do it with black crayon. It kind of rem reminds me of the seasons. It does. It looks like the four seasons. Now, the... Uh, what I did is I went through here and I drew myself some grass. To draw the grass, I'm just kind of going up and down like little triangles, but to make them kind of crooked. So you can make you some grass on there. And of course you can come back in a minute and color your grass. Now how do we draw a tree? How do we draw a tree? Well, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a line that goes up and I wanna get where everybody can see. We're gonna make a line going up and then draw another one out there. So we're going up with our line. Do you see that? Just a straight black line going up. It can be crooked. I said straight, but just a line. And then you just make other little lines coming off of that line. You can pause this video at any time with your space so bar. that you, yeah, with your space bar so that you can catch up if you're behind. Or you can even rewind it and go back if you if there's something that you missed. That's one thing that I really like about videos is being able to, to rewind or pause it. Yeah, me too. So you can do this at your own pace. You don't have to worry about keeping up with me. So there's one tree. And if I wanted to, I can do some little dots, and that looks like leaves on it. Now, right now, it's autumn, and a lot of the trees don't even have leaves. So you don't have to put any leaves on it if you don't want to. It can be autumn in your picture. Then I'm going to make another tree the same way. You can make your trees lean any way you want them to lean. You can make them have as many or as few branches as you want them to have. Whatever looks good to you, you can experiment with it and see what you come up with. You can even make a crooked tree. If you like crooked trees, you can make a tree with a kink in it. Remember that the bottom of the tree is going to be a little bit fatter than the top of your tree. So you're going to just... I need a black. I got a black over there. Marker. Marker. Okay. I'm going to use a marker. Yeah. Some of us are using markers and some of us are using crayons. Now, after you get your trees on there, you can go back and color in your grass. And then this one, I added butterflies and birds. You could make four trees in four seasons if you wanted to. You could add butterflies, birds. And like I said, one little girl told me she was gonna put a unicorn. That's okay too.
really pretty. Can I hold it up yes. and show everybody? I think Miss Jennifer, the librarian, might be an artist. What do you think? Mr. Mr. Myers, that looks jealous? awesome. I love your evergreen trees. Thank you. Remind me of Christmas a little bit. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Really Christmassy. Love it. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoy doing this project. And behind me, right here, this is my email address. I want to have an art show later this year. So I would love it if you took a picture of what you do and you email that to me. So at this address, because I want to save your work to do a digital art show like we did last year. Have a great day and thank you all.